Yo, yeah, boys, back with another video. Today we're going to be doing a cooldown video. Now, I am outlaw in this video, so there's that. But uh, I'm basically going to be talking about how to use your CDs, when to use them, and how you can, you know, use them efficiently. Now, if you're playing Sub Rogue or if you're playing Assassination, it's basically the same thing. The only difference between these specs is one... Uh, you have two vanishes compared to having one like assassination and outlaw and then um, That's pretty much all there is. That's pretty much all the difference is so When do you want to be using your CD so you can you can do it two ways or actually three so you can use it one when the moment your healer is CC'd you can use your cooldowns two Whenever they click cooldowns you can use yours or three you can use them offensively You'll see all three during this game. So here I pop some CDs here I'm um, staying on him. Uh, I'm still working on my gear. I'm getting all that together, but I'm definitely doing more damage than I was doing. So pretty much as a DH, anybody that's damage is AOE. So technically my damage would be counted as AOE dam because I'm doing AOE with Blade Fury. Uh, anything that's AOE, the feint's going to activate and you'll actually counter. So every DH ability that's not single target is an AOE ability that counters uh you know faint counters his aoe abilities so every time the dh gets on me i'm just gonna click faint so pretty much i'm gonna have a hundred percent uptime every time he swaps to me like right now so i click faint again so the moment he wants to get on me i just click faint and then he swaps after heimberg i kill the earthen or i kill the totem here so at this point we're doing good. We have evasion. We have vanish. Now, when do we want to use vanish? You can use it in two ways. Now, a lot of times, it might even be better to go DPS, to be honest. Uh, I, I feel like I have a hard time killing healers if it's not like a super, you know, easy healer to kill. Like, if it's a priest or an h I feel like I just cannot kill them. It's like my damage is just not enough. Like, I have damage on my burst, but then all of my bursts, I just don't do any damn. So it's like, I think for now on, I might be going DPS. I think DPS is probably the strat as outlaw, to be honest. I think just going healer, unless it's like, unless it's a rest of the druid, I probably should just not go healer. They just, like a good, if, if these healers knew what they were doing, uh, I would probably never kill them. I just don't have the damn. But um, pretty much, I have my evasion. I have my vanish. Uh, you can use vanish for basically a free shadow dance to get subterfuge, to get cheap shots off. Or you can use it to sap. So usually what I'll do is if you're going on the healer, if you're wanting to sap, what you're going to do is you're going to blind or you're going to kidney blind sap. So, because you ha you'll have Shadow Dance pretty much pretty quickly. Now, if you don't have Shadow Dance, then you just want to kidney the main target, maybe like gouge the off target. But usually by the time you have everything back, uh, you'll be able to just keep going. Usually I just go to healer. But So that's how you use faint. So the moment they connect on you, use faint. It's going to help. Same thing with Sub Rogue. If they use Secret Tech on you, it's going to counter that. So Faint counters any AoE ability. So, on top of this, you want to keep up your Slice and Dice. Because every uh, Rogue spec right now is running a talent where their Slice and Dice does a lot of healing. And then it also gives you attack speed. So, when do you want to be using your defenses? Pretty much all you're using your defenses is when they click their big CDs, you can either click them then. It just depends if your healer CC'd. The moment your healer CC'd and he cannot heal you, you want to be using cooldowns. Uh, if it's a if it's a melee, you want to use evasion. If it's a caster, you want to use cloak. So uh, a lot of people try to hold cooldowns and they end up using it last second. You can't do that in this type of meta. You have to use when they click cooldowns. If you lose that, if you're using CDs at 50% and you're dying through them, what's going to happen is you're going to use like evasion at 50%. They're going to stun you and then you're going to end up having to trinket and vanish. So that's three cooldowns instead of just using evasion at 80% and then going through his entire burst and then off your evasion so like in, in this example here this guy died by the swords offensively because he knew it was going to kill him so for example if I evasion what I'm going to do off the evasion is I'm going to disarm him so basically his entire burst that's on me is irrelevant so he just cc my healer and I just counter the entire go now let's say my healer's not cc'd and he clicks like ps or something or iron Burke. Then I'm not, the only thing I need to do is I'll let the warrior hit me and then when he swats my healer, I'm going to disarm him. You're pretty much going to save disarm for either uh, every sharpen or every burst. So you'll look out for a sharpen, you'll notice the sharpen icon because it'll be a mortal strike icon. And at that point, your healer is not going to be able to do much healing. That's the one time he's doing a bunch of damn. 
Now, with your rule of bones, how this works is when you get a big stack, like if you look at my stacks here, I, some of the, in, in one of these clips, I get like a five stack thing. You don't just want to click uh, your rule of bones. You want to keep your good stacks and just go through the entire duration. Because it's like there's no point of rolling the bones and getting a worse, you know, roll when you already have a really good roll. Even though it does give you like pretty good benefits. It just depends on how good your roll is. Because I've gotten a five stack and I've used my roll of bones and I've gotten like a one stack of like just trash. But pretty much that's how you use your cooldowns right there. Now that's how you use your disarm. That's how you use your cloak. This is all pretty basic stuff. You have to use when they click. Now, the only reason you would not have to use is if your healer is not CC. Then it would be on your healer to use cooldowns. Now, let's say for this. A lot of the times, people will out-damage their healer's healing. At that point, when you know your healer is having a hard time and they're clicking CDs, that's when you want to click your CDs. So, let's say my druid's healing me right now. This guy pops burst. And, you know, he's just not able to heal it. I see that he doesn't have Iron Bark. Or he doesn't have PS, or he doesn't have a you know a CD to stop damage. So what I'm gonna do is I see that he's not gonna be able to heal me for long, and he's gonna end up wasting a lot of mana just to keep me up when I'm gonna die anyway. So at that point, we're gonna just click evasion, or we're gonna you know disarm. So most likely you're gonna evasion. That's when you're wanting to use that. So there's a bunch of situations to where you you know that's when you want to use that, those cooldowns. So like for example here. Uh, I ended up holding Trinket for a while. Now, that's a good thing to do. The only time it's not a good thing to do is, um, when you're playing this type of spec, your burst just matters so much. And since it's a DH, and I'm playing with a Druid, I can kind of be a little bit risky. So, I should be Trinketing, honestly, the first CC that my guy can't dispel. So, he should have been able to dispel that, but, you know, I didn't really explain much. He, he, was, he was actually pretty good. He, he mains like shaman and stuff, so he has pretty decent XP. But, uh, so as you can see, the DH gets on me. The moment he's on me, he knows that I have faint up, and I have a 5 stack roll. That's what I mean by a 5 stack. I should never roll the bones off this. I should just let it all the way go out, and I'll do unhealable damage. Even though it doesn't look like I'm doing much, I ain't gonna lie. But when I do have my burst up, I'm gonna be doing a lot of damn. Because I have all my burst here. See, I've rolled the bones, and I got a, literally a 3 stack instead of a 5 stack. When it, It's just like... It's not worth rolling at that point, even if you get, you know, a buff. But, again, that's all you're really doing. That's how you're using your faint. Now, if it's a single target ability, it's not going to counter. Like, faint is only good versus AoE abilities. So, it's not, let's say, somebody's um, shadow striking you or mortal striking that's not AoE. It's not going to render. It's not. It's going to be irrelevant. It has to be an AoE ability. But, most people have an AoE ability. Uh, secret tech, DH, warriors when they have slice and dice, or whenever they have the thing that makes them hit two people. They have a bunch of stuff. Every class usually has something that they can AoE and they end up using it on their burst. So you end up countering a lot of their dam with that because most of their AoE abilities are their big dam. So here I see this guy has his burst on me because he has his uh, dagger. Usually he gets a lot of percentage here. So the moment he clicks his CD, when I see that my healer is not able to heal it, I'm going to click evasion. And I'm not going to click cloak on top of that yet. Because if I click cloak and evasion, then I have zero cooldowns. So we're just going to try to, you want to try to use one CD. You don't want to use everything in your toolbox off the bat like this is a bad thing to do so here i'm not gonna lie my healer so i see that i can just kidney this guy without walking down because the main goal is to try to stay in my healer's line in case that they swap me because i have trinket but i have no evasion however i do have cloak so a lot of people have a really bad habit with like lining their healer sometimes you have to but if you're getting attacked by a dps it's never good to line your healer so he actually does get a fake cast off me here and again, the DH goes on me. I instantly faint. I have evasion coming back up. I have cloak and I have vanish. So, since I'm going the healer, I can use my vanish either to restun because I don't have dance. So, if I want to restun off my kidney, we'll see what happens. So here I get another five stack or five stack proc off the roll the bones. So here I'm popping burst, and then I roll the bones again. That's exactly what I mean. Now I still got a four. I still got a four. You know, roll the bones, but it's not as good as a five. So it's just not good, even though you get haste from it. Uh, from the, I think the PvP talent, it's just not worth it, especially when you already have your burst up giving you enough haste. 
So that was like the one mistake that I could definitely see there. And we're doing more damage than a, de than a demon hunter. So clearly, you know, I am playing with a residue. That's the one difference. And this H pile is not playing on a pillar. If you're playing a healer, every healer in the entire game should be on a pillar. You should never be leaving a pillar. So here again, the DH gets on me. I'm going to faint. Um, I'm going to evasion as well because I'm 30%. My healer doesn't have Iron Burke, and I didn't have much hots on me. So at that point, we're going to trade. So even if my healer's not CC'd, if I see that this guy has no hots on me, and, you know, I'm already 30% and I'm a rogue, so it's like I don't have much. So here I see this guy, he's popping burst again. I'm going to faint, and I'm also going to cloak. Because, again, my healer is not healing me right now because he's drinking. So I, you gotta like have uh, you have to have awareness of what's going on in the game, otherwise you're just gonna die. Cause if let's say I did, um, let's say I didn't cloak there, he could have just I beam me and probably killed me from 30%. Cause I had no hots on me and it would have been trouble. But that's pretty much how you use your cooldowns in a pretty. That's how you use your cooldowns as a rogue. Now it's a little bit different with rogue mage, cause sometimes you'll evasion the opener to like stop from the druid from you know stunning you or something but that's more of like a rogue mage type guide video this is more of a just like how to use your cooldowns i don't know how i'm going to name the title yet but hopefully this gives you a little bit of you know it helps you out in somewhat category now with your blind you're pretty much wanting to use your blind like in the first like early now if you're playing with like a druid or a priest it doesn't matter to an extent usually in the opener on your blades you don't want to blind sap what you want to do is you want to have you either want to stun the healer, and then you have your healer CC. So what usually what I'll do is I'll preemptively gouge the DPS I'm going so he can't pre anything, and then I'll stun the healer for my teammate to go CC, and then I'll stun the main target. That way he's not preing anything, and I'm focusing on damage because a lot of things that people have a really bad habit on is on their blades. Instead of focusing on pure damage, they're focusing on pure CC. So they're literally getting somebody to 60 to percent on their entire blades go, getting zero CDs just because they wanted to do extra CC when their healer or their DPS could have done the CC. Now if you're playing Rogue Mage, it's different because all you have to do is stun, sheep, boom. But if you're playing a, you know, like a druid or something, they have to run with you, get up there, so you have to help them out. Uh, here, again, this is a perfect example of me going the healer when I should have been going the DPS. Again, Outlaw Rogue doesn't, I mean, I'm not like full best in slot stats yet. So I won't know until I'm full best in slots. But I am pretty geared at this point. I have both my rings. I have like 484 item level. I'm still missing some stuff. But overall, I'm still okay geared. Like, I'm still up there. But I definitely, it definitely feels weak on the side of weak off my burst. Like, it's like a really bad problem, actually. Because, like, anybody good will live to like 70% no problem, usually. Like, the only time I'm scary is I'm, I'm like a sub rogue. And playing a sub rogue with a healer is like... The worst thing that you can do. That's why I don't do carries on my rogue. If you're wondering why I've been posting DH gameplay, it's because I've only been doing carries on my DH. Now, if you're interested in buying carries, I do DPS. I do any rating. As long as... It, uh, mainly 2100, I can probably do 2200 if you're either a good mage or a good healer. Uh, so far, i played at like 20, 2200, even with like... N not even the best healers, but like, you know, healers good enough. Like, they, they have enough experience to get to that point. So, if you were uh, if you were curious about that, just hit me up on my Discord. We'll get some goodies. But, yeah, sub rogue healer, unless you're very synced uh, and you're getting comp, like, super, you, you know, count. Like, you have to have comps that you beat. Otherwise, you just won't beat them. It's not possible. The only comp that you, you'll beat is a DH and, like, a Windwalker or, like, another, like, sub rogue or something like that. Or like a double DPS comp. You'll never beat like a... Like I've never... The only DH that... Or the only rogue that I've ever lost to on my DH with a healer has been... Uh, the rogue druid that we faced. Which was just complete. That's that's their one win that they counter. But like if it, if it was like a fair matchup, he wouldn't stand a chance. It was just, it's because he had a druid and then on top of that I'm a DH. But if, if it was anything but a druid... Then it would have been in like an easy game. But just since Druid just is overtuned, like if I had a Druid on my team, it would have been a total different ball game. But I haven't played with the Druid yet, because not many people play it. Actually, a lot of people play it, but usually people that usually people that are playing it are so high rated because you don't have to do anything special as Rest Druid. You literally heal, like you'll out dampen everybody no matter what, and you can do whatever you want pretty much.
Now in threes, it's different. In solo shuffle, it's, it's definitely different. I played threes, and, you know, it, it doesn't matter what healer you're playing. Literally, all it comes down to is if you take your eye off of healing for, like, two globals, they can die 100 though. If you get millisecond CC'd, they're dead. It's actually just ridiculous. I despise it. It's so annoying. So, that's pretty much all you're going to be doing with your CC. Now, again, you don't have to be doing nothing special. If you're playing Sub Rogue, the only thing that you have to be doing differently is CC the healer. And exactly what I just did there. I went to CC the healer, I kidney the healer, and then I stunned the main target, and then I blind off my kidney. And then, and then uh, if I had, you know, Vanish or my Shadow Dance, I would have sapped off that, which... You know, I focus on damage, so that's pretty much how you use your bond. Like, if you don't have a vanish or you don't have a shadow dance, all you would have to do in that instance is literally just gouge, because you're gonna get an extra, you know, few seconds of CC. But that's pretty much that's literally all it is for that. Um, just do exactly what I'm doing. It's pretty much sub broke and assassination. It's not very difficult. It's pretty simple stuff. You obviously are going to have to get it down. But once you do get it down, it's Rogue is not a, Once you learn and master the class, even you don't even have to master the class. Just like get to a point where you're just doing everything I'm doing. Not even, it doesn't have to be perfect. Because I'm just playing these games. Like I'm doing some questionable things. But I'm still winning games. So. Uh, it's, you don't even have to be playing perfect. It doesn't matter to an extent. Make sure you're playing a meta comp. So make sure you're looking up the best comps. Make sure you're asking people that are good. Don't just be asking some random 1600 player. You need to go in. You know, go into somebody's stream. That you know, you know, can tell you what's up. Or even watch watch what they're playing. Or watch what they're facing. And then, you know, play comps that they're playing. Let's say if you're watching Nodge. Nodge is playing Rogue Mage. Or Rogue Priest. Or something like that. That's what comp you want to play. If, if you're playing a sub rogue right now, I can give you... If you want to play with a healer, you have two options. Wrestler Druid, or you have Disc Priest. Maybe Holy Priest can work, but it's not going to be as good as a Disc because you're getting Dark Arc. Now, your only DPS option, unless you're playing very well, is either... If you're playing very well, you can play Double Rogue. Or honestly, you can make any Double DPS work. Obviously, you're going to get farmed after like 2.1. But mainly double rogue is obviously just cringe, and unless you play super cringe, you'll never win a game. Unless you just do like a literally the most cringe stuff. I saw Jamili face it, and he he beat it, and then I also beat it. So it is definitely cringe. So here, as you can see, I blinded and then I sapped. That's what you do. Obviously, would be off DR, but I'm just trying to CC more. That's literally all you'd have to do. It's very simple. You stun, you blind. Don't don't gap your stun so you can get the blind, and then you just sap. That's all you have to do on your your stuff. That's when you want to use your one vanish. And then obviously you're ready setting your cooldowns as you do to him. As Outlaw especially. But hopefully this video, you know, helped you guys out a little bit. Let me know if you want another video like this. Maybe I can go more into depth. Uh, I am going to make a Rogue Mage guide. So if you guys want to see that, let me know. But I know a lot of people, like, Rogue Mage is probably the hardest thing to learn because if you mess up once you instantly lose the game because the bracket's not meant for WDBS right now but i hope you guys enjoyed the video let me know what you guys want to see next uh pm me for them carries and comment for the algorithm otherwise i'll catch you guys in the next video peace peace